Good morning to Como New Life Church. Uh, today is December 1st. Can you believe it? It's already December. Wow. I mean, time is flying by and we've been under these restrictions and all these complications for almost a year now. I, th I think we're like on month 10. And But anyways, uh, today is Tuesday, December 1st, and we are on day 7 of the Bible reading plan, a walk through proverbs and day seven means that we are on chapter what that's right chapter seven and i know that this bible reading plan has been more reading uh, than other plans we've tackled in the past but i think it's been a good change of pace right as it challenges us uh, to read our bibles more and the last time i checked reading your bible more is not a bad thing right if anything it's a good habit, or a good continual, a continual habit for us to develop. And so, you know, as these Bible reading plans continue on, uh, I would encourage you to, you know, be in Scripture uh, just a little bit more than you normally would. With that said, uh, this morning in our Scripture, uh, we are given warning, right, against adultery. We're actually given another warning against adultery. And I guess as... Uh, sinners saved by grace we can never be given too many warnings about that particular topic right and if we're thinking about king solomon i think king solomon just knows that it's a grave danger and a constant temptation right that any human being might go through just because it's our flesh we're talking about right and so this time it's about being aware of the adulteress who makes it a habit to indulge in adulterous acts in other words that's what this person is all about she is looking for any opportunity to participate or to partake in uh, some prohibited acts right if that makes sense you know solomon says that uh says to make wisdom like your sister and call insight your intimate friend right he's telling us that wisdom and insight need to be something that are inseparable Right, that this should be something that is inseparable to us, and that we, as human beings, as people of God, we should be willing to protect it at all costs. Right, that's what I think of. Like, as if you have a younger sibling, right? Yes, yeah, the older sibling, you would do everything in your power to protect him or her, and I feel like that's the same thing here. And in light of the adulteress, we should bind ourselves to wisdom. And we should cling to wisdom and not the adulteress. But why do we need to be aware of the adulteress? Given the description of her actions and how alarmingly prepared she is, chances are the man mentioned in this passage isn't the only one for her. Right? I'm, pr I'm pretty sure he's not the only one, right? I mean, she, this seems like she's pretty good at what she does. But here's the catch. Chances are he might think that he is the only one. And I can imagine how he might try to justify his actions. I, I think of movies where this kind of situation might happen. right? He, he might try to justify it like, you know what? She doesn't love her husband anymore. She loves me. She might lead him to believe that he is the one who pleases her and that he is the only one for her even though she's married. She might be enticing with her words, her actions, and let's be quite if we're quite honest, her appearance. Our scripture even tells us that she probably smells pretty good, right? And you know, if you're thinking with anything other than your head, you might believe it or you might fall victim to her trap. You see, anytime you have to justify why you're doing something you know is blatantly wrong just to make it sound right, it's never, ever a good look. And that's why it's important for us to do like verses 1 to 3 says. It says, my son, keep my words and treasure up my commandments with you. Keep my commandments and live. 
Keep my teaching as the apple of your eyes. Bind them on your finger. Write them on the tablet of your heart. You see, don't be like this young man. As verse 7 describes him as being someone who is lacking in the sense department. You know, don't be like this young man or he just walks right into her trap. What he's participating in isn't right. But he allows himself to be a part of this predicament. You know, the way that we combat this situation and temptation alike is by applying wisdom and being steps ahead of the situation. And so maybe it's not the adulteress that you need to be aware of. Maybe it's other things that make you prone to sin, that make you want to justify engaging in behavior that you know is not good for your soul. Right? Scripture tells us what that he's looking out his window, waiting for the opportunity. Right? He's just anxiously waiting. Temptation is getting the best of him. You know, recently I watched a series on Netflix. It's a new release and and so, you know, it's fairly new. Maybe you watched it. Maybe you haven't. I, w- I would recommend that you watch it. It's a pretty good show. Uh, maybe it has a little bit of inappropriate things, but I think it just kind of shows the reality of the life that this person was living. But anyways, this show is called The Queen's Gambit, and it's about this young orphaned girl who discovers her talent and obsession with chess, the game chess. And come to find out, She's really good at it, right? She's a, a prodigy. But anyways, the reason why I bring that this up is because in this drama, they talk chess, right? And as they talk chess, they're talking chess lingo. And as they're talking in chess language, they're talking about strategy. And one of the things they talk about is being moves ahead of your opponent. I'm not just talking about one or two moves ahead. Right? They talk about you have to be four to five steps ahead of your opponent but as you are four to five steps ahead of your opponent you also have to anticipate how they will move and react to your moves and so not only do you need to be steps ahead you also need to be scenarios ahead of them sounds complicated right so for example like if they move their pawn here well, then I'm going to bring this piece out. Or if they move their bishop to whatever square, right? And they have a language for that. I don't really know it. Then I'm going to move my bishop here. And then I'll bring out my queen. And I'll bring out my knight, etc. Right? They, they're they talking about all these different scenarios as they're, they're game planning. And as you can tell, I don't really know chess, right? But that spoke to me, right? Especially in light of our scripture this morning. You see, the point is this, as as we are being aware of the potential dangers and the potential temptations that exist in our world, in our day, in our our seasons, in, in our workplaces, in the places that we frequent, the way that you and I will win, the way that you and I will set ourselves up for success is by being steps ahead, right? We need and we should anticipate what might happen or what could happen. Or analyze the potential dangers if I make this move or make this decision. Right? We need to be steps ahead and scenarios ahead of the things that you and I will encounter throughout our day. And like I talked about last Friday, we need to avoid being in certain places because the truth of the matter is, is if we get anywhere near that door of temptation, it is going to be much easier easier for us to walk through that door than away from it but all in all we should want to walk away or avoid that route all together here's the thing if we want to be steps ahead if we want to be scenarios ahead then be prepared to never ever be alone with someone else's spouse if you want to be steps ahead be prepared to take a different route home Right, hear me out. I'm just being blatantly honest, we all use the internet. I need you to know this. Be steps ahead. There are no hot singles in your area who would like to meet you. 
don't click those links. If anything, get an ad blocker right. You gotta be steps ahead. Don't be lured by the bright lights and the fun sounds of machines with a lot of buttons, if you know what I mean, all right? We need to have a strategy. We need to be steps ahead. And as we are preparing a strategy and preparing for scenarios, we must be inseparable with the Word of God and His wisdom. Church, here's the thing. Be aware so that you can be careful and not find yourself in a predicament that is going to be very, very difficult for you to escape. Would you cling to God's word today? Would you treasure up his commandments in your heart and use them to live your day? So be smart, stay safe, and have a blessed Tuesday. Would you live for the Lord's glory today? Amen.